might be a tough decision right now. My but team did not just absolutely um, NFL games that were like, right. whoa. I actually don't have a lot of mixed feelings. Uh, welcome to Scrum Tone. Uh, we have another guest here on the League of the Lanes. The League of the Lanes. The League of the Lanes. This is this is podcast episode one thousand two hundred and thirty-two. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's one hundred and nine. We're going to be doing our normal thing, going over productions, MVP race, going over this coming week's games, this coming weekend's games, and then we're going to do a little fantasy update, and then that's our podcast. Then it's going to be like that for the next million weeks. But. Yeah. So, we'll so we crown a champion in the NFL. Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, we will see about that. We are now done with week three, headed into week four. We are kind of figuring out who's the who's the real uh, contenders of this league, who's the fakes. You know, we had a lot of hype over the Commanders week one, and then they lost two in a row. We also had a lot of, you know... Ruined expectations of like the Bengals and the Colts from starting off really weak, but you know they've bounced back since then. So I think we are start starting to figure out what the real uh, dynamic across the league is. You know we still have some surprises. Don't get me wrong, such as uh, the Jaguars. Mm -hmm. They look pretty strong randomly. Yeah. Um, really, really just took coaching. I mean they had a pretty big free agency, but not like it looked like they threw money at like. Decent players, but nothing like too crazy that made people feel like they were going to really take a next step. But I feel like the coaching really turned that ship around. Yeah, it's crazy to think, crazy to see the Jaguars uh, pop off the last few games. But I don't think we, we're like you said, we're starting to. But I think we're going to get our true, true standings of what the league look like looks like around like week six, maybe week five, week six, because I feel like. People can go on like a three game stretch or a three game, yeah, three game stretch. We don't really know too, too much, but yeah, I agree. It's, it's looking stronger most definitely this week. And mm -hmm. we're seeing who's at the bottom and who's at the top. And let's start off with the Cleveland Browns versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. I did not watch this game. Um, <laughs> I would be frank, but the Browns won 29 to 17. Yeah, it's a lot closer than the score looks because at the very end, the Steelers try to go for like a, a Hail Mary type play, you know, the the, the laterals. Hey guys. Hello. That was Trey. Um, they try to do the laterals all the way from like the goal, the opposite goal line all the way down to the other side. But then one of them fumbled, the other, uh, the Browns got it and scored a touchdown, so... Uh, if we take that away, it's really just a, I think it was just like a differential of like six points overall. You know, mm -hmm. it was within reach for the Steelers, but the Browns just rallied um, all the way through. Jacoby Brissett looked really good, actually, um, or at least serviceable. They also have been rushing a lot. Um, Jacoby Brissett isn't passing that much, but when he does, he's doing really well. And even when uh, they need a, a really big fourth down conversion, they're not always giving it to Chubb or anything like that. They can depend on Jacoby Brissett's size to get those QB sneaks and stuff like that, or even just to get some passing fourth down sometimes as well. Um, he, I think it was Amari Cooper he passed to for a touchdown where he like hit it directly in reach of Amari Cooper's like very long uh, grasp. I guess what is it called? Wingspan. Yeah, wingspan. You know, he's got that elite wide receiver uh, wingspan that they're taking advantage of. Put it at the top, above the shoulders. That's where you want to hit a uh, wide receiver in the in the end zone. And Jacoby Brissett did that. Something we see a lot of like younger quarterbacks not being able to do as much or do as proficiently. And you know, Jacoby Brissett's a veteran, so the Browns are still going to look as good as they would even with like an elite quarterback. Maybe the the wins they get aren't as dominant, or the losses they get. Uh, may be a lot worse than they could have been, but I think at the end of the day, the record isn't going to be super affected by bringing in a different quarterback, if I'm being honest, uh, because Jacoby Brissett has looked decent. Yeah. 
The run game has been good. The defense has been good. At the end of the day, that's all you really need. Kind of like a 49er-esque, and I was reading up on an article today saying that the players, oh, the Steelers players are getting frustrated at their offensive coach, and they're just saying Chase uh, Claypool commented and a few other players too commented saying that we just haven't found, they haven't found themselves or haven't found like an offense, uh, and the play calling on the offensive side is really, really trash, or basically my words, but they're just saying that they're, it's not good and um, offensive players are saying that they have the pieces there to maybe not in the quarterback area. Well, maybe in the quarterback area if Kenny Prickett would actually play. But <laughs> Prickett. Prickett. I, I don't know why I keep saying Prickett. I, <laughs> Sounds so <laughs> offensive. <laughs> the first couple of times I did say Prickett and then for whatever reason my mind just defaults to that. I mean Prickett. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I don't know why my mind uh, is doing that, but yeah, they're just getting frustrated because they're saying that they have the pieces there to be really explosive, but it's just play like calling that's not doing it for them. Yeah, I have more faith in the Steelers' defense going into this, and I felt like both offenses were kind of like meh, but I mean, the run game has been so well established in Cleveland, whereas like you got Najee Harris with some some potential there, but I think the offensive line just hasn't been able to get him the openings he needs. Whereas the Browns have like two star guards right in the middle that Chubb and Kareem can uh, run through. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, there's just a lot of like holes on the Steelers offense that are just making things really difficult. And you have some like really, like you got stars on that wide receiver um, running back, like, the, the weapons, star weapons, it's just, like, the people that need to get them the ball or the openings to do their job are just, like, not doing it. We saw a really cool play, though, from George Pickens. Um, oh, yeah. Insane grab. Uh, people were memeing saying, like, Trubisky put it where only he could get it or something like that, but in reality, I don't think Trubisky is actually doing much good for the Steelers. I think that change to pick it is you can feel it you can feel it coming now now more than ever uh, it's just a matter of how how patient the Steelers organization is going to be with both of them both quarterbacks it's going to be interesting to see uh, if you know what it will take for that change to actually finally occur I agree uh, Trubisky is proving that he's a really solid backup QB and not definitely not a starter and yeah, I also saw me. I I just lost my train of thought, but I also saw like a lot of memes surrounding that as well. I got compared, or it got compared to the Odell catch. Um, yeah. But yeah, Chicago, Houston. I came. I picked Houston in back to back weeks to win, and back to back weeks they came surprisingly close, and I actually had the lead for a little bit, and back to back games, and they disappointed me because I, you know. I always say this week in week out, I always have an upset and I picked Houston as my upset back to back weeks and they disappointed me back to back weeks so I don't think I'm going to be picking them back to back to back weeks. But Chicago won off a last second field goal, Justin Fields and that passing offense is still shit. It's, it's, uh, it's, and I don't even, I don't understand how you're not passing the ball in this league and not able to pass the ball in this league. Because it's a very pass-heavy league, and it's just, cr especially thanks to Houston Texans, I feel like that's a team that you can definitely boost your confidence in passing-wise. And Justin Fields is, is looking more of like a running back than anything. Um, wow, I completely disagree with almost everything you said <laughs> about this game. First of all, I think Chicago is honestly just as bad as Houston, and I won't even call if Houston were to win this game, I won't even call it an upset. I think Houston is just as capable of winning against the Bears as the Bears are winning against the Texans because both are very slim on actual star players. Uh, we, we've seen what Mills and Cooks, Brandon Cooks, can do with their connection, but as far as like who Justin Fields has, he has absolutely no one to throw to. A lot of people had some faith in Darnell Mooney, but he just has not been doing what he needs to do. And the offensive line is atrocious. He's the most pressured quarterback in the league. Um, by a long shot, I think it's like on a third of his snaps he's getting pressured. 
I'm, I'm like literally praying for his safety overall. Like there's a young quarterback that we could see like a very Trey Lance esque thing happen to him where it basically ruins his career if you know he doesn't stay healthy and he's not able to get through you know this year to just at least improve on all of it. And so the reason they're not passing is because it's just there's no way he can. Anytime he has to, it's always just gone bad because the offensive line isn't there, the weapons aren't there. You really just got that running back room that is able to actually get the yardage, and that's why they've been leaning so heavily on that. And even when David Montgomery has been out, you get Khalil Herbert with, like, I don't even know, like 20 to 30 attempts. Like, they know that that is their only path to victory, whereas, like, Houston, they got Damian Pierce doing well. They have Brandon Cooks. They actually have some weapons that are serviceable. Their offensive line has actually been doing decently. It's just that on the defensive side, they're not the greatest. Uh, they don't have, like, a true star there yet, I don't feel like. Whereas the Bears' defense is actually pretty star-studded, I would say. Like, you got Roquan Smith, who's doing pretty well. I definitely feel like that is how Bears have managed to get to a 2-1, and one, just from excellent coaching uh, from Eberflus and that defense, and then also the run game, which, you know, Eberflus comes from the Colts where run game is emphasized heavily. So until you get, like, a great offensive line and – weapons in general like just give him just give field one guy to pass to you i think until that happens like you're not going to see a lot of six, a future success from the bears it's just going to get worse and worse maybe yeah i i think what i was seeing was i was only seeing meme pages from it and in the past couple of weeks there's a lot of meme pages memeing that he only has like 45 total attempts through three games and i'm like oh, that's the bears i don't really care to look much into it but yeah, that makes sense for why he's not passing as much. And now that I'm thinking about it and you brought that up, it, it makes a lot a lot of sense that why he's not passing it. And it's just a shame because I feel like he has a lot of potential. If they give him something, and yeah, I just forgot about all the other pieces that actually take into effect. The stat line's crazy. It's the stat line, he's 23 for 45 attempts. And if you cut to uh, Josh Allen, he, Josh Allen, threw for 63 times against the Miami Dolphins in a singular game. It's just it's crazy to think about that, how just trash the Bears offense must be when you're, when 45 attempts is usually what quarterbacks get to. I mean, it's probably a lot lower than that. It's probably like 30, 30 to 40 attempts maybe by a QB is probably average. But it's just crazy to see that through three games that he only has 45 attempts and the Bears are just, they're just garbage. Yeah, the Bear, Bears need a good draft. That's that's all it's going to take at this point. They weren't, re they didn't really have the the capital to really get anyone in there um, this past draft, but give them one good draft, and I think, you know, we're actually going to be able to see Fields at his best, or even a good free agency. I don't know what it's going to take, but it's going to take new pieces getting involved in it's really hard to like really evaluate Eberflus's like first season as a coach when he's given absolutely, you know, bottom of the barrel as far as like offensive line and weapons. Like it's, I would say it's the worst wide receiver room in the league um, by far, and they're playing to that. Like they 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 know that, and so they're playing to that degree, like knowing that the weapons just aren't there. So why even bother? It's kind of just like stunting. Justin feels his own growth. You know, we're not going to really see his potential <coughs> realized until much later. And uh, let's say, like, you know, Justin Herbert was automatically given Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and a decent line. It wasn't the greatest, but, you know, it was still serviceable. Austin Eckler as well. Like, I think those are all people that could contribute to that passing game, whereas, yeah. Just feels is, just does not have that same scenario. But we can move on to the next one. We finally got the Titans first win and the Raiders are now 0-3 probably one of the bigger surprises across the NFL through three weeks at this point I think all other teams have been able to find a win mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the Bengals were able to the Panthers were able to those were the other 0-2 teams Raiders are the lone winless team right now um, well I guess you could count the Texans as winless as well they, they only have a tie that's their claim to fame right now but yeah, the Raiders offense is not looking good, as good as it's supposed to compared to like last year. We, I mean, you have Josh Jacobs and then Derek Carr throwing to Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, and Derek Waller. That was supposed to be 
putting all all defenses in the AFC West just like it was supposed to put them for a scare. Like, you know, if they started building up their defenses like rapidly, I mean, the Chargers brought in uh, J.C. Jackson, for example. Yeah, I just I feel like it's not delivering, and you know they also have Mike McDaniel's who's supposed to be an offensive minded coach, and it's just like it's looking atrocious. You have Mac Collins randomly becoming their most productive wide receiver when Devontae Adams is there and you have to wonder like why why is this happening <laughs> yeah because um, they were one of the after all the accusa not accusations so uh, I, I people that they acquired uh, through the off season they were one of the most hype one of the most hyped teams coming into this uh, season or one of the teams that everyone was looking forward to see because they got Defonte Adams, got, they got, wait, did they get Mac? Or no, Mac went to the Chargers, right? Cool, Mac, yeah, he's yeah. in the Chargers. I think, I think they got Chandler Jones. Yeah, they got Chandler Jones. Um, and they acquired a couple other key pieces, and everyone was saying how that division was going to be one of the scariest divisions in the league just because of how many new pieces uh, acquired uh, to, I think it's the AFC West. I think, yeah. and yeah, they were one of the most uh, highly hyped division in the league, and yeah, it's just crazy to see the kind of turnaround, and yeah, Tennessee got their first win, and yeah, it was, someone had to win, I guess. You, you predicted that this would be the first game where uh, meaningful snaps would be given to the, the other quarterback in the Titans. Fuck, what? Oh, Willis? Like, yeah, Malik yeah. Willis, yeah. yeah. You said his first meaningful snaps would come in this game, and uh, they didn't. <laughs> no. uh, that was kind of a uh, throw up in the air, but yeah. Uh, I guess they're going to ride with Tanny Hill. I thought Tanny Hill was just going to play bad again. I mean, benched. they were winning. You can't just yeah. bench Tanny Hill when they're winning. Yeah. Well, I mean, I thought I thought, I thought, thought it would be like Tanny Hill would like play really bad like in the first half, and then he'll get benched, and then Willis would come in and take over and have some meaningful snaps if that was not the case. All right. Then we had the biggest upset of the week. And eh, maybe maybe there's another one that is kind of up there, but one of the biggest, we had the Colts beating the Chiefs after a lot of people were saying Chiefs by 20 <laughs> and all that other stuff. Uh, just the morale for the Colts really wasn't there, at least in the fan base. They really felt like this was it. But at the same time, there was a belief by me and some others that... The Colts are just one of those teams that can get blown up by everyone, but also can beat anyone at the same time. They just have a really low floor and a really high ceiling, and which is not the greatest thing you want for your organization, but it could be worse. They managed to get their home opening win um, that they were wanting so bad, and it was against the Chiefs, who we managed to upset a lot of times, it feels like. Um, Feels like this is we're not a stranger to beating the Chiefs in like very memorable ways. So uh, it was cool to see this. The offense still looked very tragic, to put it, to put it lightly. Um, and the defense was the one that really like carried us. Even special teams, I would say, like uh, Gus Bradley, our new defensive coordinator, finally really showed us why um, his schemes are, you know. The, the future of this franchise because you can limit Patrick Mahomes <coughs> so one passing touchdown and an interception one of his first September interceptions ever so that's pretty pretty important and I'm excited to see like how that will play out against other other teams that have like big passing attacks and it has it gives me a lot of hope for those teams that rely a lot more on their rushing like the Titans mm -hmm. because even even from like the Texans and the Jaguars games our run defense was immaculate. That was probably like the only saving grace of our team through those first two games. And so now that we have like a serviceable passing defense, I think like we could actually like have a team go scoreless against us at this point. Like I'm 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 actually like favoring Colts against the Titans right now, despite both of them getting very convincing wins against very. Uh, you know, initially hyped up teams at least. So yeah, I think uh, it's good news for the Colts on that side because everything seemed to be going wrong. But now we have some things going right. Offensive line is still an issue. We need to get more productive on the offensive side. But, you know, things are trending upwards at least. 
Yeah, and I I told you this. Uh, or I told Titus this uh, this past Sunday, and I told him that Colts are one of the only teams that can say that they can lose to anyone in the league, but also can beat anyone in the league, and that's like a crazy conundrum to be in. And Titus was texting me. He was freaking out because he was on the plane, and he was coming back from his homeland, and he was homeland, yeah yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, I I got to watch the first half of it, but I didn't get to watch the second half of it. I was keeping up on the ESPN like box score tracker thing, like just like the little graphic of the of the field with the logos moving back and forth. That's basically yeah. how I was keeping track of the second half. But then my internet stopped working on the plane, so I didn't see like the last fourth quarter. You know, because Matt Ryan is now top five all time in fourth quarter comebacks uh, led for his team. So. Congrats to Matt Ryan, he will always be known as a choker because of the Super Bowl, <laughs> but the full picture shows that he's actually not, and actually it was his defense that fucking choked in the Super Bowl, not Matt Ryan, but uh, people don't want to hear that. People want to make fun of the quarterback always, you know? Yeah. They're the highest paid, of course, so it makes sense. But I still think Matt Ryan is a quarterback that we needed to take us to the next level. He's just not getting those, op- getting those opportunities with the offensive line, but he's, he managed to do it against all odds. He had a really cool throw. I saw to like Alec Pierce, one of our rookies. So our rookie is now starting to trend upwards. Jelani Woods as well. He got two touchdowns on three targets <laughs> total. So um, that's also good news for like the offensive rookies. Yeah, there's, there's good signs there. Uh, we just need to put it all together. And I mean, this was a good start, definitely. The Chiefs are no joke at all at, on any side of the field so he's your kicker now our kicker now is an old kicker we had i think it was like 2019 chase mclaughlin he sounds vaguely familiar i think he went to the browns briefly i could be wrong mm. um yeah but he he's good like we just wanted someone who was a little bit more consistent and blinkenship he, he boasted really, like, consistent numbers from short range. He just kind of kicked the long ones, which McLaughlin can do. I don't think he does it super consistently. I'm not sure, but, yeah. But then Terry should just come out of retirement. No, we're just going to wait for his kid. His kid's got a leg, dude. There's another kid, all-time great Colts kid. Coming oh, yeah, all the Colts kids are going to come get drafted by the Colts. I'm ready for it. <laughs> he actually has two. He has a younger son who's still in middle school, I think, but then one that... I think he's committed to Ball State. I could be wrong, but yeah, we're gonna get that Vinatieri. Yeah. We're gonna yes. waste a fourth round pick on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're not gonna pull a Raiders and get a first overall pick and race it on a punter. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that's true. Yeah. But uh, going on, <coughs> excuse me, going on to Miami Buffalo. A thriller towards the end, and Miami looks like they're the best team in the league now. I disagree. Yeah, that was kind of uh, <laughs> over facetious, but they're definitely, they solidified themselves as being a top three, three team, top, and the top three teams in the league, if not at least the top five, and this was a good win, a good defensive win for the Miami Dolphins, even though their offense kind of struggled, but hey, it's an all-team effort, and you have to have a good defense to um, win games as well. And sometimes when the offense isn't doing too hot, especially when it's one of the best defense in the leagues and the Bills have not the best defense in the league, it's understandable for why they had some struggles. And yeah, I think Watt only had two catches for 33 yards. I don't know the statistics for Tyreek Kill or any other Hill, but or any other Hill, any other player on that team. But it looked like they kind of stalled, and they kind of got lucky towards the end as well with that uh, Josh Allen unfortunate play, trying to didn't have enough time to spike the ball and trying to get into field goal uh, range to win. But I don't know too too much uh, other than that. Other than uh, Tua is Josh Allen's dad now. Um, that, that that was pretty cool of a uh, cool piece to the Tua's family. Um, but yeah. All right. Um, yeah, Tua. 
that that video clip of Tua and Josh Allen is that's going to go down in the history books. Like, yeah. <laughs> anytime they they match up in the future, you know we're going to be seeing that all over. Um, yeah. So my thoughts on the Bills is that their defense was short staffed, uh, had a lot of injuries. I believe it's Hyde who's out for the season now. He didn't play at all last game, and that's going to leave a a dent in that defense for the whole season. I think they still have a, enough depth there where it's it's still going to be fine and they have enough stars elsewhere other than high. So I think I think it's going to be okay, but still like they're still short staffed with like short term injuries and inactives. So I'm surprised Miami didn't capitalize on that more, if I'm being honest. And I, I see some weaknesses from Miami where I'm not exactly ready to call them a top three team just yet. They're definitely in the top ten. Um, I think they've just had a very miraculous run through these first three games. Uh, I mean, beating Ravens was just, like, insane. And obviously, like, they deserve that win because it was a collapse from the Ravens' side. But I, I still think we're going to see, like, their true colors show in future games. I think even starting this Thursday night against the Bengals, I have Bengals to win that one. I'm not bought into the Miami hype fully yet. They're definitely, like, a... Sh- uh, a shoe-in for the playoffs at this point, which I didn't think before the season started. So my expectations of the Dolphins still have risen, but not to the point where everyone else is at, saying that they, they could even go to the Super Bowl. I'm not, I'm not there yet, but I still think they're a really good team that uh, is going to get still get a lot of good wins like this in the future. Just, you know, they're going to get a little humbled soon, very soon. Next one, we have another comeback. We got Minnesota, Detroit. Detroit looked really strong to start this one, but then... Uh, some things were, went wrong. DeAndre Swift went out for with an injury. Monroe St. Brown was also playing through an injury, I believe. He, uh, both are questionable, if not already confirmed out for the next game, um, which is sad from Detroit, which, you know, they're showing signs of life that we hadn't seen from the Lions in a very long time. But Minnesota, Minnesota rallied back. Uh, I didn't see Justin Jefferson do too much. I don't, I don't even know where it came from, honestly, on the Viking side. I think their defense just clutched it out and gave the offense good field position, maybe. Yeah, I... This was a very sad loss for Detroit. I was rooting for them the entire way to uh, win, and I I didn't know that the Vikings were coming back until you texted me. I thought that the the Lions were still like up big against the Vikings, but then you texted me, it's like, oh my god, I can't believe the Vikings came back, rip like the Lions. And I'm like, oh shit. Cause like I was so focused on the Eagles game. And yeah, it's, I, I still think the Detroit's are still a very solid team. And they have a lot of potential and they're one of the highest scoring teams in the league still, I think. And yeah, I they have a lot of potential and I don't know if I will put them into the playoffs this year. I I definitely a lot pr- improved. Um, I think I had them at six and eleven maybe, predicting. But I think they're more of an eight and nine team uh, this year, record team. And they definitely have a lot of upside in the next five years. Um, I'm gonna reset the camera real quick. Cool. Now we got Ravens versus the Patriots. Yeah. Ravens uh, were basically in control of the whole game. It was pretty close for a while, but I, th- I still feel like Ravens had pretty good control. Uh, Lamar Jackson was looking like his MVP form, just looking dominant in all areas of the game. Uh, and that's really important because the defense has not been showing up in the way they, they should be. I feel like they have enough star power there where they should be doing better than they are. I mean, this Patriots team is not that good on the offensive side, uh, Mac Jones has not been looking great. He was even injured at one point in this game, so it's kind of it's kind of scary for the Ravens uh, to see their defense playing the way they're playing. You know, I think they should easily be three zero, but it's because of their collapse against Miami last week that it's just leaving a long term effect, and they're gonna have to really recuperate if they want to win this division. It's, it's going to be close. Um, you know, Browns are. You know, obviously their starting quarterback is serving a suspension, but he'll be back. And if the Ravens don't take advantage of that and really get to a like off to an early lead, then you know Browns could easily take over late in the year. 
but the Ravens really need to start to uh, solidify their lead early. Um, and I guess you could also say Bengals, of course. We can't count the Bengals out, uh, <laughs> uh, even though they're down one game. Steelers, uh, I think, is okay to count out <laughs> right now. But, you know, anything can happen with that defense, with that coaching, of course, Tomlin. Tomlin still never had a losing season in his life. We can't expect him to have it now, you know. He might he might rally. It could be a late-season rally for getting that 9-8. and eight. So Ravens can't, can't get too... Uh, too happy about their performances, even though Lamar Jackson's looking as good as he is. And Mac Jones just got deflated. He had three interceptions in this game. Mac Jones equals trash. On top of an injury, that's just yikes. Yeah. That's, uh, a, that's a bad day. Yeah. Um, Cincinnati versus the New York Jets. Cincinnati kind of reclaimed what kind of that uh, energy that they had last year. Even though it wasn't against the New York Jets, I still think New York Jets are far from as bad as they were last year, so I still think it's a solid win. They put up the amount of points that they need to win, and they controlled the entire game. And this was an all-around pretty pretty solid game. Yeah, Joe Burrow looked good again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and let's see where this... Uh, I'm just interested to see where this leads, because I don't know if the Bengals have the Super Bowl hangover or not, and I just want to see... I'm not... I'm not too sold on the Bengals quite yet because I don't know. As of now, I'm not getting too, too the best of vibes. I'm kind of seeing them like a 9-8, and 8-9 eight, eight, eight and nine kind of season. And they're definitely not as bad as an 0-2 oh start that they started off. Definitely not that bad. But I just don't know if they can um, come. I don't know if they can be as good as they were last year. And they're, they're still in contention for the division at least. Yeah, yeah. I mean, will they make the Super Bowl? I, I actually doubt it. But I think winning the division is... I think they're honestly favored still, um, all things considered. You know, they're going to have to rally a little bit um, right now to catch up. I mean, they're only one game out, but still that can feel like a lot. Um, at this point in the season. Especially with uh, as good as like the Browns have been playing and then as good as Lamar Jackson has been playing, you know. Getting that getting back that one win is gonna you know, it's gonna scar them late in the season and be like, oh man, we shouldn't have let that slide but uh, I still think they're favored. I agree. And Jets you know, Jets are gonna be like mediocre this year, but you know it'll be signs of life that will help them get this franchise back on track into the future. Uh, this year is obviously not their year by any means, but you know, I think I think a lot of things are like looking up for the Jets overall. Yeah, but then and they get Zach Wilson back. Oh yeah, I'm I'm happy that they he gets back and it wasn't too serious of an injury at all. Yeah, um, we can talk about the Eagles now. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna state this too because I'm gonna state that I'm gonna preface this first because Titus humbled me yesterday because I was feeling a little bit too confident and too cocky and I should know better for being too cocky about the Eagles. I was just riding the high and the last the last three weeks, you know, Eagle fans don't can't really be as happy or they're not as happy as we are now too too often and I'm not used to this feeling being an Eagles fan and being this confident about the Eagles. So he humbled me a little bit and I'm going to retract some of the confident or confident see that I have um, about the Eagles because I know that if I get too carried, carried away that energy is going to get into the Eagles minds it's gonna affect it because I feel like not me personally but like the entire like fan base and the players definitely feel it too I, I love the approach of Nick Sirianni because he's he's saying let's let's uh, dwell on this not dwell let's let's take in, in this victory for a day let's 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 capture this energy, but then let's not forget about it, but let, let's get to the next game and just focus on the next game. He's taking it by game by game, which I love that mentality, especially with the Eagles because you need that kind of mentality. You need to focus on one game at a time. You, we can't focus on the big picture. We can't even be thinking about the playoffs right now. We need to be fo focusing on winning the division first. We need to be focusing on winning the next game first before winning the division. And I like that mentality. And the Eagles are looking really, really good. They have some, they have a couple of flaws here and there. They can't, they, I want to see more of a second half effort by them on the offense, even though they were leading 24 to nothing 
all those points came in the second quarter. But I would love to see a little bit more life in the offense. Um, even if they got like a field goal, maybe another touchdown, just just to keep that momentum going. Um, but they were just trying to get good time management. And it kind of makes me afraid because we kind of got bailed out for Washington's offensive line being trashed, trash, and being able to get to Carson Wentz. And Vikings, the Kirk Cousin curse, and him just being awful, kind of got bailed out there. Washington and the Vikings were able to drive pretty, pretty good, or drive pretty easily against us in the second half. Um, if it wasn't our that's not to take away from our defense. Our defense played really, really good, and that's why we were able to stop them. But some of these better teams, even Jacksonville, who is going to take more advantage of that. And 24-point lead is very big, but it can diminish very easily in this league. Proven by the Dolphins-Ravens uh, game, a uh, big lead can be swiped away pretty fast due to momentum in this league. And if it was a better team, like the Dolphins, like the Ravens, the Chiefs, honestly, any, basically any other team that's above mediocrity, then I, I would be a little bit more scared uh, for them to come back, even with a 24 point lead. Enough said, I, enough criticism. I just love the Eagles right now because the offense is playing lights out. Jalen Hurts is spraying the ball. It's, it's something new each week. It's Avante Smith this week, AJ Brown the first week. The running, running offense against the Vikings. If you're going if you try to stop one of those things, we're going to blow you away with the other. Jalen Hurts, he can run the ball anywhere any which way. You think you get you stop him in the passing, he's just gonna run all over you. Things you think you stop the running, his running effect, he's just gonna pass all over you. Our defense is looking very strong, that defensive line is scary. We can we got nine total sacks against Carson Wentz. I know their offensive line is trash, but nine sacks Nine sacks in the game is crazy, and yeah, I'm just really excited, and I just hope that I think Nick Sirianni is doing a really good job in coaching them and not getting too overconfident. That's one of his main things is to not get overconfident with it, and he's taking it by game by game, uh, quarter by quarter, play by play, and we have to focus up, but thanks, especially thanks to Jaguars, which I'll get into, but yeah, that's the end of my rant. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Good job, Eagles. Uh, not Kaylee. But <laughs> just the Eagles. They look good. Yeah. And uh, Wentz is now showing um, Washington uh, why the Eagles and Colts have passed on him in subsequent years. Um, obviously, I can't say for sure yet the Colts you know, are on to better things, but Eagles definitely are. Yeah, Wentz is a very hit or miss. Mm -hmm. And the Eagles... Eagles knew where to push buttons, <laughs> and uh, they did it very successfully. So, yeah, Carolina, New Orleans, New Orleans. Uh, we both had them. Yeah. And they just did not show up. They are kind of uh, not good, I guess. I don't, I don't know what's happening. I keep thinking that maybe they'll get back on track again, but it just. I feel like every year they have like that one game where like, oh, maybe Jameis Winston is good. And then it's just the rest of the year. It's like, wait, why are they still starting him? Yeah. And so, and now on the other side, you have Baker Mayfield somehow doing it. Uh, he didn't look great, but I mean, they rallied, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. Matt Rule finally, I guess, was like, oh shit, I need to save my job. You know, this was a divisional rival, so I mean, it's a good one for them, a good way to uh, get back on track maybe hopefully maybe Christian McCaffrey will start to look super dominant again yeah I feel like both of these teams are just kind of like in a weird place just like not very convincing either of them yeah I agree and this is good for the Eagles just because of the draft pick currently we have the seventh round seventh overall pick in the first round which is crazy especially due to how good the Eagles are but yeah the Saints I thought there would be coming off the gate a lot hotter. They only won by the Falcons by one point, but yeah, I, I got, you summed it up perfectly. I got, I got not much to say. <laughs> yeah. Now we have Chargers Jacksonville going into the later afternoon slot. Um, this was the other big, I guess, upset of the week. 
But I mean, Jacksonville's just looking good. Yeah. I yep. mean, we we all we all looked at like the Washington performance, and we're like, oh, look at what Wentz is doing to them. They must be garbage again. Mm-hmm. And we were starting to talk about how like Trevor Lawrence was not getting any criticism in the same way that Trey Lance and Justin Fields were. And we we're starting to give it to him. And then they went out and did what they did to the Colts, and we we're like, okay, well, you know, they looked good, but you know, it's the curse, right? Mm-hmm. Like. Of course they won there. Of course they looked decent there. The Colts looked trash. That's all it really was, right? It was more so a Colts loss than a Jaguars win, surely. Mm. But then you see this game, and you're starting to think, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> Maybe the Jaguars are just good? Question I mean, mark? they have both those running backs, Essien and Robinson, doing work. Their wide receivers all pulling their weight. And uh, Christian Kirk and Marvin Jones and all that. Yeah, it's crazy. This... Doug Peterson, I guess. Doug Peterson, man, he's a he's a good coach, and he just shouldn't. He I feel bad for him because he kind of got like blamed for the destruction of the Eagles, but he like towards the end of that, and I especially bringing the Eagles to their first Super Bowl, like hate to see. He's he's a he's still a really good coach, and he's definitely showing in Jacksonville here, and I'm rooting for him, just not next week. Next week he can do really bad, but after next week I feel like I'm gonna be. Jaguars are one of the teams I'm going to be rooting for just because of Doug Peterson. Not like, not like rooting, rooting for, but like you know I I hope they do good because like they've been dumpster, they've been a dumpster fire, their entire, entire uh, franchise history except for the 2017 season, but yeah it's it's cool to see a bad team have a little bit of life like this. I don't know how far it's going to la- last, but if you dominate the Chargers, I feel like it's going to last pretty long. And especially what you said against the Colts and stuff, you know, it's 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 becoming more real. It, there's a lot of elements that to a successful successful season. But you got the Rams versus the Cardinals. Rams won, Cardinals look like trash. I don't know what's <laughs> up with I don't know what's up with that offense, especially Kyler Murray. Yeah, we both kind of called it uh, the other day. I mean, I actually started the Rams defense, um, which, you know, if you looked at the Cardinals' previous games, you know, they were still scoring a lot, a lot of yards. But I was, I wasn't very convinced. It just felt felt very inefficient overall. And I was like, okay, the Rams are bound to like get some turnovers happening, you know, because mm-hmm. Rams have been like leading the lead league and turnovers this time they didn't actually they actually didn't force any turnovers the only turn- turnover they did force was actually through special teams they blocked um a kick yeah it wasn't really a, a defensive a very like defensive turnover showing but they just showed their dominance in other ways and they looked more like a unit which was like my one criticism against the rams otherwise they actually like they seemed more than just their stars. They actually seemed like a really good defensive unit. Mm-hmm. And I think that was very important to see. Uh, offense is still looking a little weird. Like, Matthew Safford hasn't been as productive. Mm-hmm. Definitely leaning a lot more in Cooper Cup, which, you know, that needs to be fixed. Especially since the Arizona Cardinals defense is not that convincing. Either. They should have. I feel like they should have put up more points. But, yeah, I think uh, overall we're starting to see more. Like, okay, Rams are still a good team. And the Cardinals are not as good as a team as we thought after their big win against the Raiders. That was super memorable because of mm. the crazy two point conversions and all that. Like Kyler Murray is good, sure, but he's not. He doesn't have a lot of help. Marquise Brown looked decent, I guess, but otherwise it's just yikes. Um, yeah, this 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 team is for me personally the one of the most disappointing teams this year so far. And hopefully they can turn it around because I, I just like that high-powered offense. And their defense looked really solid with J.J. Watt. And a lot of other key factors. It's just they have a lot of pieces there. It's just it's weird that they're not using them to their benefit. But you got Atlanta Falcons versus the Seattle Seahawks. And Falcons barely, barely beat the Seahawks. But, you know, this is what kind of what we were expecting. The Seahawks not being really good enough to close out close games like this. Atlanta is su- kind of surprising. Not surprising. I feel like the, this has kind of been Atlanta the past few years. Or, th- yeah, past few years. Where they come into close games and they usually been losing. Like, they lost to one point to a, a point next to the Saints. And they almost came back, I think, next to the Rams. So they're, they're putting... They're, 
was it? Yeah, it was the Rams, I think. And they're putting up with these. Like, their offense is, is looking really good, and in, I think they have a bright future. I think these are – the Falcons are definitely up on the rise. It's just they have to close out some of these uh, – Close, close games, and I think if they add a couple couple pieces the next couple of years, they're going to look really scary. Yeah, their opening drive uh, for the Falcons had three targets for Kyle Pitts, which in the past, they Marks Mariota and the coach were getting criticism for not utilizing Kyle Pitts more in the passing game. Uh, he's been like blocking or just like looking like a decoy in general. Um, and then finally he started getting some like actual production out there. He didn't get a touchdown or anything, but still it was like signs of life for the offense. And you could just see how it like affected the, the spread of the ball so much better. Like Drake London had a good day. Cordero Patterson had a good day. All of a sudden you really see like what that can do for the offense and they get their first win out of it. Um, because they're able to spread the ball around a little bit better. And, uh, yeah, they Got, got their win from it. Seahawks still look, you know, like they're going through a rebuild sort of year. Um, despite their really powerful opening win against the Broncos, obviously. Geno Smith isn't, like, per- terrible or anything like that. I, I really don't know, like, where the source of the issue is with this organization. Because, like, it feels like they have a lot of stars scattered through that organization on both sides of the ball. Offense and defense, but like neither look convincing. So it's just at, at some point you have to under, you have to start to think like okay maybe is it coaching or just like general management like just team building in general like yeah I don't know I think we're gonna see some some big changes after this uh, year with the Seahawks if things are going the way that these past two weeks have gone because uh, yeah I just I, I I don't think this is the future here with Geno Smith at least. I also agree. Geno Smith is uh, more of a backup kind of guy. He, I, I don't know. He he's a really good backup and a good a really good like filler for any team. But he's definitely not a starter in this league. Right. Um, but then you got another exciting game in the Green Bay Packers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Great. I use lightly, cause or the lightly, cause Green Bay should. The Green Bay should have had a lot more points than this. They were basically dominating the entire game. And Tom Brady did not look good at all. And I saw this one clip and apparently on the very on the two point conversion, the very last play, they the Buccaneers home field apparently put the play up and Aaron Rodgers saw it and he uh went over to the coach and said something to him. Kind of wild that the home Home stadium did that to the Buccaneers, which basically. Wait, made, what do you mean? Like they put the play up, and what happened? Like Aaron Rodgers saw the play before the play happened. Oh, okay. And he told like his coach, and then the coach did adjusted their, his defense. Gotcha. For that play, and yeah, that's that's how because uh, Aaron Rodgers had a little sly comment about it, talking to the reporter. And he was like, yeah, I just used my researches, or resources, went over, told the coach, mm-hmm. put, him, put in a little good, good word. But yeah. Tom, Tom Brady did not look good at all. Aaron Rodgers, or Tom Brady definitely is showing his age. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, it, I feel like, is just done with the Green Bay Packers. So I feel like he already has five interceptions this year, which is very, very unheard of because usually he averages four interceptions a year. Aaron Rodgers? I think he has five interceptions. No way. Let me double check this. I sh- I need to stop getting all my resources from memes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, according to a meme, no, he, no, has no. Two, he has so. two. He has two. He has two. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Forget what I said. Um, but yeah, I just feel like he's kind of out of it. At least for the organization. No. Yeah. I mean, I I'll agree with you there. Like he does not look. Well, I'm not going to say him. I think the Packers just don't look dominant at all um, through these three games. Uh, they've been managing to close out games, and good for them. Like, that's good coaching, I guess. But I just – the talent isn't there, really. They they were all thinking, like, one of these wide receivers is bound to pop off and, like, really, you know, elevate their play and put the team on their back. But I haven't really seen that from any of them. It looks more like their running backs have been doing a lot of that work. Uh, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, 
AJ Dillon even more so. I feel like he's been he stepped it up a little. Defenses, I mean, they held Tampa Bay twelve, I guess. But even still, like Tampa Bay hasn't been looking amazing. They also don't have any weapons either. Oh yeah, a lot of injuries on the Tampa Bay side. So yeah, uh, it was just it was just sad to watch. Honestly, just these teams used to be so dominant and exciting to watch, and now they just seem lost of life, and that's sad to see. Yeah. It feels like both Green Bay and Raiders lost their trade for Devontae Adams. <laughs> it just feels like they both lost somehow. Yeah. It's yeah. It's just a I feel a weird energy coming from the Packers and Bucks and some of these other teams too. It, it's weird. It's a weird it's a weird season. I feel like it's a definitely a shift in the NFL where we're seeing kind of newer teams arise. I think I spoke about wanting newer teams to be good. And we're kind of seeing that shift in the NFL where newer teams and newer set of dynasties are going to arise. And teams that usually have been good for a decade is not really, doesn't have a lot of hope and does not a lot, have a lot of uh, life in them. Yeah. And then we get Denver and San Francisco. <laughs> this was so boring. Miserable Sunday night football game. 17 punts. Um, if I was a Broncos fan... I'd rather be a Colts fan than a Broncos fan. And that's saying something, because the Colts have not looked amazing, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but yeah, Bron- I just keep uh, it, thinking yeah. about being a Broncos fan. Uh. Like, I feel like it's the Eagles, but on steroids. Just like put all my future into this quarterback that hasn't done anything. $200 million quarterback. What has, what has he done? He's accomplished... The award for being the most corniest quarterback in the league. <laughs> Other than that, what has he done? Still a mm-hmm. winning record, though. So I, I guess it's kind of the same thing with Green Bay. Like they've been managing to close out wins, and maybe that's that veteran experience that they need, or whatever. I don't know what it is. Defense, though, I'll say that defense looks really good on De- yes. Denver. Probably, honestly, one of the better defenses in the league. Like up there with a healthy Bills defense. Up there with. The Eagles against uh, the past two weeks, at least. Not against the Lions, but um, <laughs> the Vikings and uh, Commanders um, up there with... You know what? I'll throw Colts in there against yes, the Chiefs. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, obviously not as dominant as what the Broncos or Eagles or Bills have shown, but still, I think Colts have looked pretty, looked pretty good against the Chiefs. Um, yeah, they... They're in that in that category of just elite defenses, so they better be riding on that because there's not much else to ride on. It seems. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, whereas the 49ers, is, it's a very similar situation. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, like yeah, the morale is back because they they trust him more maybe, but I mean, I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look amazing. Um, I'm just really happy that Gregory. Uh, is not with the Dallas Cowboys anymore. The Broncos definitely won that trade. <laughs> He's been the past few games that I've watched the Broncos. I've watched. I hope Trey doesn't uh, hear this, but I've watched a little bit too much of the Broncos uh, the past three weeks. That more than I would like. And but Gregory, Gregory's showing that he he's a force. He's every every time I see him play, he's always making a strip sack, sack interception. I don't even know. Like, he's just on fire. I'm just glad that he's not in the NFC East anymore. Facts. But then you got, speaking of the NFC East, you got got one of back-to-back miserable, I guess not, kind of not towards the end, but... Yeah, back- it got exciting towards the end, but then ended very, like... Abruptly, I feel. Abruptly and just, like, sad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you had one... Okay, so Daniel Jones was actually looking pretty decent through the game. And, you know, there's this chance to finally get that comeback drive, but then his wide receivers just, like... Fell. <laughs> Literally. Um, yeah, they fell. Uh, one just fell, not even in, from injury, he just simply just tripped or whatever on his route, which is lol. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's just... Oh, my God. And a comeback drive. <sighs> I mean, everyone's going to meme on Daniel Jones for that throw, too, because it looks like, oh, his wide receiver's never near it, but, like... If you, like, see the route that, like, Daniel Jones was anticipating, then... I mean, it was good anticipation. 
you know, mm-hmm. like that's the type of throw you're supposed to be like be doing. Like you're supposed to throw where the receiver is supposed to be. And it looked like it would have been through a tight window too. And yeah, it could have been good if the wide receiver was actually ended up there. Um, <laughs> and then on the other side, you had your better receiver actually get injured and is now confirmed out for the whole season. So yeah, fuck. On that's, a, that's really sad. On a singular play, it. Yeah. That that was just a tragic end to a tragic loss, but that just made the Eagles the number one seed <laughs> in the NFC. I mean, take that as you will. That's we're only three games in in an eighteen game schedule. So I mean that's what I was saying and again, just gotta focus on game by game. But I'm gonna I'm gonna stand up now and reset the camera, then we're going to talk about all the MVPs and why Jalen Hurts is going to win MVP Player of the Year. MVP actually stands for Most Valuable Player. You idiot. You're <laughs> so dumb. So MVP. yeah, let's, let's get into MVP race. Um, I actually changed up the format a little because I wanted to highlight players that aren't quarterbacks in the honorable mentions rather than the mediocre quarterbacks. So my defensive MVP right now leads the league in total tackles. He has half a sack, two tackles for a loss, and an interception. He's a linebacker that is on a winning record team that should not be a winning record team, and he's the reason why they are. Um, Roquan Smith, Chicago Bears. Uh, he's looked very good. He's been leading that defense to uh, some really nice stuff, you know. Um, they looked really nice against the 49ers and all that rain. It's not easy, man. It's not easy. Yeah, I, I, I've liked what I've seen from him. I'm obviously not going to be putting Justin Fields in the MVP or any of those running backs in the MVP category. So someone has to take credit for that 2-1 start, and I'll, I'll give it to him. He looked good. My wide receiver MVP is Cooper Cup because Matthew Stafford has thrown five interceptions. Yeah, I just I just don't feel – their running backs aren't really doing a lot of work either. So I feel like someone's got to take credit for this 2-1 start on the Rams, and obviously their defense is really good. Don't get me wrong. But on the offensive side, Cooper Cup has been absolutely carrying. He leads the league in receptions and targets. He's sixth in yards for 280, and he's tied for second in receiving touchdowns. Three. Yeah. Then you get Nick Chubb, who's my running back MVP. Um, I'm not going to give it to Jacoby Brissett because he's not really <laughs> passing that much, even though in the time his attempts he's been looking good, but I feel like they're definitely leaning on their rushing more on that offense. And the production they get is just amazing, so I'm playing them. Uh, he leads the league in rushing yards, 341, touchdowns, four, and 20 plus yard plays, also four. So, there you go, Nick Chubb. There's your recognition. I think he, he deserves a lot more recognition. Um, he's in his fifth season now, and he's always just been so consistent. Hasn't exactly been able to like be at the top of the running the rushing yard list or anything like that because of Kareem Hunt being there as well. But, you know, he's finally showing, like, why he why he's one of the best. Yeah. Starting off the top ten quarterbacks, though, the people that will actually probably end up getting MVP because of the league being the way it is. <laughs> um, number ten is actually Cooper Rush, uh, who... I'm just going to give some credit for, you know, he hasn't turned the ball over at all. He's just been doing what he needs to do. Like, players like Jacoby Prezet, who's just, like, being brought in short-term to, like, get the team to where it needs to be so that the other quarterback can, like, you know, come take over later. Like, Jacoby Prezet has, like, an average of, like, six yards per completion or something like that, which isn't anywhere near what we see from, like, the MVP quarterbacks. Cooper Rush is actually up there, though. He has 10.9. He's in the double-digit range, all right? That's more than Tom Brady. That's more than Kirk Cousins with Justin Jefferson. So let's give some credit to Cooper Rush for what he's done in these past two games. I I don't really count that first game, week one, because he was brought in late. So to be even, like, anywhere near the same numbers of these other quarterbacks who have played through all three games, uh, I think it's pretty impressive. So, yeah, obviously it hasn't been elite or anything, but still. Tom Brady's number nine. I'm going to give him a little bit more credit than I've given him in the past. He hasn't looked great, but given the weapons he has, he's still been serviceable. He's still 2-1, only lost to Green Bay Packers, which they're a good team. 
you know, three touchdowns, one interception. Could definitely be scoring a lot more, but, you know, he's still up there in, like, passing volume in general. Just been used a lot at his age. <laughs> so, uh, give him some credit there. Kirk Cousins, kind of the same deal. Looked really bad against the Eagles, but then he had this comeback against Detroit, which it's, it's hard to get a comeback against Detroit when they're as high scoring as they are. Their first game was also really good. Um, and he's been able to spread the ball. It's not like Justin Jefferson taking care of everything. Like this past game, I, I haven't even heard about, hadn't heard about Justin Jefferson really. It seemed like Adam Thielen was getting the ball, ball more and Kirk Cousin was, you know, doing his thing. He has some of the most volume as well. Only behind Josh Allen on this list. Has 119 passing attempts, so. Yeah, giving him some credit there. Going into the quarterbacks I actually expect to be in the conversation, Aaron Rodgers, uh, he's carrying his team because he does not have the wide receivers he did before. Obviously, it's still not like his other past two MVP seasons, or at least how they started. Uh, he has two interceptions already, which is unheard of for Aaron Rodgers. But still, he's getting the job done. Very accurate, the most accurate on this list. And... Uh, yeah, he's been a good game manager and all that, so there's that. Someone who's really improved since last year is Trevor Lawrence. Gotta give him props. I mean, just a really solid, like, stat line. He's not really, like, leading in anything particularly. <coughs> it's just like, you know, he's only throwing one interception. He's got six touchdowns. Good amount of yards a lot on a lot of attempts. It's not like they're leaning on the rushing too much with him because he's young. Like, they're actually giving him his opportunities, so, yeah. Shout out to Trevor. They got Patrick Mahomes. He slid against the Colts. Um, he was at one last week, nine out of five, but uh, still looking good overall. Like just the one interception. He still's got the best touchdown to interception ratio, eight to one. So Josh Allen is also here. Um, tied. He's no, he's not tied. He leads in volume, essentially yards, completions, uh, attempts, while maintaining a really good accuracy completion percent. At 71%, so I think that's really impressive. He's got 10 total touchdowns. Yeah, he's a machine, and I don't think anyone should be surprised that he's in the top five. Uh, Tua has just kind of, like, stayed at num the number three spot. He, has, he didn't really do anything yesterday, or not yesterday, but Sunday, that really, like, made me feel like he deserved to move up, but he also still won the game, so he, he's not sliding down. Uh, eight touchdowns, two interceptions. No, he's been very accurate. Like, extremely accurate and still throwing for a lot as well. So, uh, he has the second most, he has the second highest passer rating, too. So, that's impressive. Then you get Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. He rose all the way to number two from number six. Mm -hmm. I finally gave him his credit for uh, the passing stuff. You know, he did have the passing stats I wanted him to have the, pa the first two weeks. But this time he actually showed it off. Um, he got three passing touchdowns this past week. Um, I think he is, yeah, is pretty accurate. He has the the best average uh, yards per uh, completion uh, with 13.9. So, you know, he's slinging it too, which mm -hmm. is impressive. A lot of yards off of that. Pretty good passer rating. He's also got three rushing touchdowns. So he's scoring even mm -hmm. even not with his arm. So, gotta yeah. give it to him there. But the only person that can top that is Lamar Jackson. He is like my definite leader. Mm hmm on this MVP list. Most a lot of people would still say Jalen Hurts is tops their list, but I think mm -hmm. like you can't ignore what Lamar Jackson's doing. Ten passing touchdowns. After all the memes of him being just a running back and all that bullshit, he's got ten mm -hmm. passing touchdowns. He leads the league in that. He leads the league in passer rating. Give, the, give this man his flowers. So all, doing all that while also leading all the quarterbacks in rushing yards as well with 243 and two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. So he's showing you that he can do both, all right? He deserves his fucking money mm -hmm. as well. That's the yeah. other thing I gotta say. They gotta lock this guy down, get that contract in order, because he deserves it. That's, that's all. Yeah, I got a couple of things to say. I'm mad that Jalen Hurts has that interception because that was not his fault, and he should have. That play should have never been called. Secondly, Lamar, Jalen, hearing these Jalen Hurts like contract rumors too, like he could be like. 50 million a year at, at like that's one that's way too much money at the Eagles pay him that much money that's that would be such a bad move two if Jalen Hurts is already getting talked about getting 50 million a year where the hell is Lamar Jackson's contract 
Like, if Jalen Hurst gets signed to that major of a contract, when Lamar Jackson won MVP, Lamar Jackson still putting up MVP seasons years after that. Like, he's he's right now playing lights out, playing, playing better than Jalen Hurts is playing right now, and you're still not going to give him a contract? Like, I... I just feel so bad for Lamar Jackson. Like, he's just... All uh, that after trading away Mar- Marquise Brown as well. Yeah. Like, literally the entire Ravens, like, organization is wanting Lamar Jackson to fail. But he's proven week in, week out that you literally can't stop the best player. One of the best players in the league. You can't. You can't, st- you can't stop that stud. But enough. Amen. Enough about that, let's go to NFL predictions. And yeah, so Miami first, Cincinnati. You, you uh, hinted earlier that you, you had the Bengals. Oh, yeah. um, I have Miami. You're wrong. Um, I'm going to be right, and you're going to be like, oh no, I wish I should have picked the Dolphins. No, I'm, I'm going to eat my words there. You're going to be like, cut to this very moment, and you're going to be like, you're gonna be like I told you so. But I don't know, I, I feel like... This is a little, not, this isn't a trap game for the Dolphins. Dolphins are coming in knowing what the Bengals are. So I just feel like Dolphins are too much of a hot streak, especially coming off of a win with the Bills. I feel like they're going to continue this. And I'm I'm not even going to push it that much further, saying that they're going to dominate the Bengals. They're going to dominate? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's sad. How, like, three weeks into an NFL season, everyone's, like, I- ideas change about every team. It's so crazy. People, like, such bandwagoners, I swear. It's so wild. Like, this is the same guy that, I, like, was on the verge of crying when the Bengals lost the Super Bowl. Was so <laughs> he, was, he was getting in his feelings about that. So, I'm excited for all this hype to just shut the fuck up. Because I also wasn't on the Bengals' bandwagon. I wanted that hype to be die so bad. And now to see how quickly those ties <laughs> change, I'm just like, oh my god. I just, I just want there to be like some stasis overall. I want there to be like tempered expectations all around the board. So I need the Bengals to take care of business Thursday night. Shut everyone up. Just everyone. You, even everyone. Bengals fans. I don't even want Bengals fans to be happy with it. <laughs> I want everyone to just shut up and be like, okay, yeah, both teams are just decent. So you want a sloppy, a sloppy win out about... Sure. Sloppy win. I don't think it'll be like convincing other than the fact that they won against a 3-0 team. Who's calling me? Me. I'm calling you. Mom, not now. <laughs> Imagine you pick up. Be like, hey, we're doing a podcast. You want to say hi? No, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to mom, though. Uh, we got the Vikings in London. We're gonna be playing the Saints. So the Saints basically give up a home game this year to be in London. Um, that's always something I found very interesting, especially since the Saints are a team that really thrive off of their home environment. I mean, the Vikings also give up home field advantage as well. No, they don't, because they're an away team. Oh, oh, yeah. Th- yeah. This cuts into oh, our okay. away team uh, oh, okay. scheduling. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Yeah, I think this is important, like, schedule-wise. Obviously, you know, it's a, it's a trip to even get there in the first place. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what happens with this one, uh, you know, the effects of it and all that. But, yeah, I also have Vikings. It seems like you do. Yeah, I, I feel like the Saints aren't as good as a team. I feel like the Vikings are better of a team. And I feel like this is going to be a statement game made by the Vikings, particularly... Justin Jefferson, and if Dalvin Cook comes back, they're saying... I forget what he said about Dalvin Cook, but I don't think he's playing. But I think it's going to be a statement game for Justin Jefferson and saying basically that I'm still top three receiver, top five receiver in the league, and you shouldn't mess with me after back-to-back weeks of not really performing great at all. So, yeah, that's why I have the Vikings, and I feel like... I, I'm, I'm just, I forgot that I needed to root for the Saints to lose because of that draft pick that the Eagles have from them. So another loss on their, their table is going to definitely help out the Eagles. That's all uh, I got to say. Then we get Atlanta, Cleveland. We both have Atlanta, which I think is a little bit of an upset. Um, Cleveland, you know, looking like they're taking care of business, even when they're projected to do a little bit worse than they have been. 
But Atlanta is kind of, you know, showing signs of life that a lot of people said weren't there. Um, they thought it would just, you know, get handed over to Desmond Ritter really early, or, you know, they would just go 0-17. Like, some people really thought that. But I think I think Atlanta has the ability to really step up and at, at least be like a middle-of-the-pack team. Um, I think they're capable of getting there. And uh, I don't think Cleveland is, like, the strongest team. You know, I don't think it's going to be a, a blowout if Cleveland wins or anything. Yeah, and I, I feel like the Falcons are, like I said earlier, they're keeping, they're keeping games close. So I feel like they're going to keep this close. And I feel like they can exploit the Browns in many different ways. And fuck the Browns. Every time we talk about the Browns, I'm going to say fuck the Browns at least. At least once. Yeah, it's a little bit of an upset, but I feel like it's understandable upset. Um, Facts. But we got Washington, Dallas. Got Washington winning, because fuck Dallas. And I need Dallas to lose, because they're 2-1. I was rooting for them a little bit last, or yesterday, last night. I will admit that. And I regrettably was rooting for them, because it didn't make any sense for the current climate. I don't know why I was rooting for them. Um, and, yeah, I just fucked Dallas. You but just fucked Dallas? Just fucked Dallas. I, you just fucked Dallas? Yeah, I just fucked Dallas. Um, yeah, and, yeah, I pushed them off a cliff afterwards, too. And they're not a team anymore, so... <laughs> yeah, I think once we'll have a mini comeback game against them. Nah, probably not. Dallas defense is too good. I'll probably come elsewhere. I think Dallas offense will start to tank a little. They've been showing too much signs of life with Cooper Rush. I, I don't think it's going to hold up, obviously. Um, yeah, I agree with that statement that you said. I think Washington will get like a really sloppy win over this. Uh, Cowboys team is just counting the days until they can get Dak back. <laughs> yeah, we got Seahawks, uh, Detroit. I got Detroit winning. I feel like Detroit's going to blow out the Seahawks just because of how high-powered how high-powered that uh, offense is and Seahawks, you know, they've been a little too close in games recently. A little too much for my standards. And I feel like they're due to get blown out. And just to, just to show the league how kind of bad they are. And I, I don't even think they... They should be 0-3 right now, honestly. I don't think they... Like, they played terrible against the Broncos. I don't know how the Broncos let the Seahawks win. Um, I wouldn't say they played terrible. Yeah. Well, I, I guess they didn't play terrible, terrible, but... The Broncos had many opportunities to win that game, in which they flaked, and it's yeah. it's more so that the Broncos kind of shot themselves in the foot. But Seahawks are, I just feel like, are due to get blown out, um, big time, like thirty to ten, thirty to three kind of way, forty to ten kind of way. I feel like Detroit's the team to do it. Yeah, I actually have Detroit winning, but I don't think it'll be a blowout just due to injuries for those for what makes that offense so high powered. You got questionable DeAndre Swift, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Josh Reynolds, who's been like uh, get, relieving uh, Amon Ross St. Brown from being like the only receiver doing anything. So I feel like the fact that all three of those are questionable is not a good sign. Uh, you're definitely not going to be able to win with just Jamal Williams, but uh, we'll see what happens. You know, it's still Seattle, so it's probably a good thing that. They run into Seattle here anyways, and then get a bye week next week, uh, kind of saving them from this little injury spell that's happening to them right now. Oh, and I forgot to mention, but Ramon St. Brown, his streak's broken, sadly. Why would you say this? Because uh, he got six, in his, six receptions. Why would you say this, though? Like, I just, because it's been... Why did you bring this up? Because it's mentioned a lot of times on the podcast, Titus. We have to mention it. We've been saying, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's still a great receiver. But I just have to say, it's, it's only because it doesn't count. <laughs> um, Colts are going to beat the Titans. Yes, I agree. Because fuck the Titans. Yeah. <laughs> fuck I'm the not Titans. Even, I'm not going to give decent commentary here. I just think uh, Titans are bad, and they're going to go eight and nine. Okay. Book it. That, that's what they're going to go eight and nine. They only say the same thing. Titans Actually, are what bad. did what did I say? Because I, I did predict this. Okay, I said ten and seven earlier. You're going 8-9, and nine, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I feel like Colts are going to go up. They're, they're going, they're, they have a little high right now going off the Chiefs, and I feel like they're going to carry that into this game and beat the Titans, and I feel like Colts are going to go on a little winning streak here, and they're going to reclaim why they shouldn't be at the bottom of the league. 
after a slow curse cursive start. Um, cursed. Cursed start. Um, but next game is New York Jets versus the Chicago Bears. I got the Jets. Oh, New York Giants versus the Chicago Bears, and I got the Giants winning. Because Chicago's bad, and even though the Giants lost last week, they should they still put up a good match. And Chicago's just bad, and I feel like Giants they started two zero. They're definitely if they would have advanced to three zero, they definitely aren't deserving of a three zero start. But you know they're not they they're not bad. You know they're I I feel like they've entered right on the cusp of being average. They're like right there, and I feel like. This is a new start for the Giants, and maybe they're going to finally get to the averageness and not be bottom five team anymore. Um, and yeah, Chicago's looking like they're bottom bottom five team, if not the worst team, even though they're two and one. I don't even know how they're two they're two and one, but yeah. I, I actually do think the Bears could win this game, um, just from the fact that it'll be the first game without Slayton and Daniel Jones. I feel like needs that comfort of having that wide receiver. He always gives the ball to and to not have that and to have other receivers might like mess with his whole mentality and we know what he looks like when he has a bad mentality um and just not in it so or any it might have to lean more on Saquon Barkley and that that alone could get them the win uh just from how unproductive the Chicago offense will be but yeah I think it could go either way honestly I just think it's more realistic to see the Giants as 3-1 based on their first three weeks than to Chicago, because yeah, they, I just I don't know. I I can't see it. It's just like Chicago's not three one team, or they shouldn't be, but it's also just scheduling, I guess. Yeah, like Giants make more sense than the Bears to be three and one. Ah. Um, I know, I know you have Jacksonville for certain, but I have the Eagles winning. I feel like this is gonna be not as easy as the past two weeks for the Eagles. I feel like this is going to be their toughest competition yet. Beginning of the season, I would say out of the first four, it would be the weakest competition that they have to play against, but definitely not now. Jacksonville destroying the Chargers makes me very, very nervous playing against them. Um, it's going to be a tight game. I feel like it's going to be a kind of 3.3 3 to last second kind of drive, last second like three-point advantage. I feel like the Eagles just have like... More pieces surrounding to get the wind and to solidify it. So I have the Eagles winning. Yeah, do you have Jackson? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I want it to happen so bad. The only losses I want the Eagles to have this year are against Jacksonville and the Colts. That, that's it. That's all I want. I want them to lose to their their old coaches. I think that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's funny. I think Nick Sirianni would get laughed at. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I personally would. We beat our former QB, so it's now the coaches run. We gotta beat our former coaches. We'll see about that. I mean, it's the former coach battle between the Colts and the Eagles. Cause Nick Sirianni, your old coach. Nick get... Sirianni himself said the best player he's ever gotten the pleasure of coaching was Charlie. Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, and. He also sense. said Philip Rivers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <So. laughs> I mean, I I feel like there's truth behind that. Philip Rivers is not is not a bad quarterback, but I would think like Quentin Nelson or Darius Leonard. I wouldn't know had Philip Rivers. Well, I mean, he's, he's the offensive, so that. Oh, Darius, yeah, yeah, fuck Darius. Um, yeah, poor Quentin Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, I I got nothing to say because I ranted about the Eagles a lot at the beginning of this podcast. So I just think the Eagles have more intangibles to win and more complete team to win. So that's why I got the Eagles. Intangibles. Yeah. What are their fucking Jalen intangibles? Hurts. Jalen Hurts. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Hurts has the dog in him. That's He's gonna let the dogs out. He's gonna going to be Jacksonville shoeless. Oh, okay. um, Steelers, Jets, we have a dispute here as well. This is my upset of the week, I think. I'm not too confident. I No, I'm, I'm pretty confident about this upset because I feel like Jets, Jets are, they reached uh, meteorocracy. And I feel like, fuck the Steelers. I feel like 
the Jets, Zach Wilson, gonna outdo Trubisky and um, Carter. Carter, the running back, is gonna get like 150 yards, three touchdowns. No, I'm gonna down the grade to that to a touchdown. I think Steelers are going to come into this a little bit too confidently and just explode, implode. Nice. I would just like to, before I get into this, I, you, you, you said it a couple of times now, so I just wanna cut it off. Uh, it's mediocrity, not C. Mediocrity. Mediocrity. Can you do that, Google? The, the what? The, the, the sound? Yeah. Mediocrity. Why is it pronounced like that? I like my version better. What I'm do you mean? To, I'm, it's a T. I'm wanting to continue say by way because I like my but way better. But there's not a C in there or an S. It's a T. There's a C in there? Yeah, but you said mediocrity. Yeah, I like my way, my way better. <laughs> <laughs> I've changed the English dictionary to my benefit. So, mediocrity. Alright, anyways, I tried. I tried. <laughs> Yeah, I have the Steelers, but I actually I see what you're saying about the Jets. I, c I could definitely see it. I could, I'm could. i fine with being wrong here. I'm not fine if Jacksonville loses or Bengals lose. I want them to win so bad. <laughs> um, just for the point of being right. But if I'm wrong about the Steelers, I don't give a fuck. It's fucking Steelers. Like, okay. Fuck the Steelers. Yeah, exactly. Um, next game. A game that should be prime time, but instead is a 1 p.m. slot. Um, <laughs> Eastern time that is. Baltimore and Buffalo, two one. Onesies is going to go down to two two, and that's gonna that's gonna be a, a big deal. Honestly, it's gonna be weird to see from both how both like quarterbacks have been playing and just offenses in general. But because of that defense being so bad on Baltimore side, we both have Buffalo. Yes, and I feel like Josh Allen is definitely going to have a chip, especially how last game ended for them. Josh Allen is going to have an even more big of a chip. He had a pretty big chip on his shoulder coming into the season, but he's going to have a massive chip, especially losing to the game that he could have controlled and was in his hands to win. And he ended up uh, losing to it just because of Ravens defense. Buffalo's going to win. Then you got Los, Los, uh, Los Angeles Chargers. And then the Houston Texans, I got the Chargers. I'm not picking Houston Texans anymore. And I wouldn't have picked the Texans in this case anyway, but I'm just not going to pick the Texans just because the Chargers are really good. And I, yeah, fuck Texans. I have a tie. Why? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you change that. I'm like, why are you changing? I think it would be funny if they lost to the Jacksonville and then tied with Houston. That would be really funny. <laughs> yeah, if Houston goes 0-2-2. You know how crazy that would be? I don't think I've ever seen a team go have two ties in a season. Yeah, it's, never it's happened early on. I should. You got anything to say other than it should be a tie? No, it's the fucking Texans. Are you kidding me? Like, All right. Don't even deserve the time of day. All right. So, Carolina and Arizona, both teams that I'm like, lol. <laughs> Can't wait for them to start campaigning against CJ Stroud. Yeah. Just kidding. Arizona is still going to roll a Conor Murray, but I think Carolina is definitely one of those teams that are are going to be competing with Houston, for example, to get CJ Stroud. Yeah, I think I think it starts here. I think you should just start tanking here. You got your one win, Carolina. You can be happy. Um, start start tanking. Give Arizona their win because Arizona still has hope. Yeah, and I don't know why, but I just don't like Baker Mayfield. So I just picked the Cardinals. No, I was joking. Like Cardinals, Cardinals. This is this should be a statement game for them, and this this is going to decide their season. Um, just kind of how they're going to approach the rest of the season and yeah this should be a very big statement game for them and if they lose then it's going to be like wow they suck um but yeah and then you got green bay packers versus new england new england patriots i got the packers because fuck the patriots i don't like them um and yeah the packers should just have their way because they have a lot better defense than the ravens and i think yeah i think they're, they should control this entire game yeah, I think New England sucks. Vegas, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. But I, I don't really have much to say there. Both teams have kind of just been meh, but Green Bay is at least meh with Aaron Rodgers. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Also, I think Mac Jones might be like out. I thought I knew that it was at twenty eight minutes, but I didn't feel like getting up 
Because <laughs> I thought that maybe we had a chance to get through the the rest of the games, but I was talking too much, and then we would just do fantasy like Dumbass. off off camera. But Vegas, Denver. I got Vegas. I also do. Because hmm? Denver sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to get the first win. Have, have we picked the Broncos this year? I don't think we picked... I think okay. we picked the Broncos and thanks to Seahawks, but I think that's it. So, we neither of us had, <laughs> had them against the 49ers. Understandable. Okay, I had them against the Texans. <laughs> Alright? I knew that Houston, Houston was too bad. Um, and yeah, we both had them against Seahawks. That's so funny. Back when we had... Better expectations. I've just been shitty on the Broncos unnecessarily. Like, if Trey ever watches this podcast, like these podcasts through their entirety, he's gonna be so bad. Like, <laughs> he's gonna be so bad at me. Like, I don't even care because the Broncos suck. Come on, Trey, you gotta admit. It's only the defense that gives me the idea, of, like, okay. Raiders' offense has been looking bad, and the defense has looked phenomenal for Denver, so that side of the ball will be taken care of. Seemingly, but then it's the other side of the ball that's like a coin flip. Like, will the Raiders take care of it? We'll see. Will Denver start to actually be the offense they're supposed to be? We'll see. We'll see. Then we got Chiefs, Tampa Bay. I have Chiefs getting their uh, rebound win after that weird Colts loss they had. I Tampa agree. Bay will go down to 2 2, which is how I feel like they've been playing, anyways. Yeah, I just feel like the Buccaneers have been struggling offensively, not so much defensively. Their defense is the only reason why they've been in games. But I feel like the Chiefs are like, all right, we just lost to the Colts. We're going to fucking destroy Tom Brady. Um, it's weird. We have two. I'm. I'm kind of, I'm This is a good primetime game. This is a good primetime game. Um, just because it's Tom Brady first. Patrick Mahomes, and it's Tom Brady, we, I feel like we've got a lot of good back-to-back -back matchups with Tom Brady, Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers last week, Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, I feel like he's just making his rounds through good, good uh, matchups like that before he retires, um, just like, if he plays another season, I don't understand why he would, like, just go enjoy your family, like, stop playing football, um, but yeah, I got... Uh, Los Angeles, no. <laughs> the Rams <laughs> versus the 49ers. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I actually do have the 49ers. Oh, well. I think it'll be, it'll be a weird game where the 49ers just, like, shock everyone with a really good offensive performance. Maybe a Debo Samuel-led offense. Uh, he hasn't exactly surpassed expectations or anything in any game. He's in like have like some sort of explosive game. I think that <laughs> I could have just controlled Z. I thought I could, but then I realized. Tell me it is control Z. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> talk. <laughs> I don't want to talk anymore. Why? We have we still have to go over fantasy. You don't wanna I don't have to. He you don't wanna you don't wanna make fun of me about how bad my fantasy is doing? You'll bounce back. You wanna see your averages? So I've been doing this like stat thing. Your average performance is still over hundred points. Oh that's good. You know, top half of the league. Yeah, you just uh your projected amount of points is like at hundred and ten, you just you're not capitalizing on that. It's uh it seems like poor management on you... your part. Not not getting the at least above your projected points. Yeah, because you I see, can you see the elite, yeah. the elite teams up here that yeah. get more than their projected points. Yeah, yeah. That's I what that's what stands uh, stands out. Yeah. I mean, you can you can control it. You gotta see see who. Uh, My bench who was awful choke. this week. I need to get new players. Yeah. I don't like this fantasy league. In my, I wish. <laughs> I wish, I wish, I just wish that my team would actually play good. Look at me, I, I get 20% more points than I was projected to get, and I already have the most projected points in the whole league. I don't understand how you're good, <laughs> like it's literally, it's like 75% luck. <laughs> I don't understand how you're this good. I don't, it's, it's no luck involved. 75% luck. All brain. Mm -hmm. If it's 75% luck, then... 
Bro, I have Kyler Murray, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams all underperforming like shit. Like, in any given week, I'm not going to bench any of them. But they're my least performing players. Like, what, I'm going to drop them? No. Maybe you should bench them. I'm, I'm not going to fucking <laughs> bench them. They're my best players. They're the ones, literally Cordell Patterson is doing better than them. But I got 84 points. I lost again. I'm 1-2. And, and Titus is... Uh, 3-0. Brendan's 3-0. I'm tired of the I wish... I just need to switch leagues. Is that your bench? Wait, what? No, that's my projected points. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't understand how you're good this, like, week in and week out. I should... He's he's cheating. He's the league manager. He got first pick in the overall draft for being league manager. That's why... He, He's Whoa, so wait, 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 wait. He's cheating. He's cheating. That is a big accusation. He's cheating. You can't just say He's cheating. Shit. He's cheating. No. Hey, you're the one who wanted to talk about fantasy. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Well, you know, we always talk about fantasy for five minutes at the end of the podcast. No. This is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it creates good content. But that, that's the end of the podcast. Thankfully, I don't have to sit with this fucking... Mm. Bitch anymore. Highest scoring quarterback and running back. Second highest scoring tight end and kicker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm doing booty. I had such high, high hopes. I drafted Lamar Jackson after Kirk Cousins. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a home league, so. Yeah. Anyways. Alright, bye. Goodbye, everyone. I hope I see you later. I hope you come back to visit once more. It's been fun. Goodbye. Thank you.